So originally, the first episode was going to be my Neptunia rankings, but as I was doing my first game playthrough, uh, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, a thought came to my mind. And it was one basically rigged within the opening cutscene, and, you know, the actions of Dante, and in contrast of, in comparison with the words of Sanctus. See, Sanctus really, really loves to just preach on and on and on about the heroic holy deeds of Sparta. It makes one wonder. Are the deeds of Sparta the holy aspect, or is it the emotional, simple and honest emotions that make Sparta's actions and thoughts so great? And I think it's this loss of translation that when involving words, Nero gets bored to sleep of the words of Saint is talking about Sparta. But if you notice something in the final battle with Sanctus, you start to notice a slight change in the trend of mindset. Nero's perspective comes goes from the immature church hater to the actual preacher, to the actual person who is so much of a believer he has succeeded Sanctus's own Worship of Sparta, if you, think, if you will. You know, because his words are simple. What you lack is what Sparta did not. Let's keep in mind, this is a paraphrase. Sparta had the ability to love another being, a human. And that is what you lack. It is in these words, in comparison with how his demeanor starts. How his and how through lenses of Credo, especially Dante, and his feelings for Kyrie, that he goes from heretic to believer. And I think the biggest catalyst of this is Dante. In fact, you could say that the very catalyst of you know Nero's doubt in it that the initial doubt of the you know faithlessness in Sparta was when Dante appeared and fired the first bullet into the head of Sanctus. Because he knew full well that Sanctus wasn't done, nor was he going to die. That is the reason that is part of the reason why he appeared. The other is the motivation of finding a motto. But if I've noticed anything is that he knew he wasn't going to stop saying this or the savior by simply firing the bullet. He fired that bullet to basically send a message to the order of the sword. And it is in this message of the order of the sword that its biggest non-believer went on the path to eventually becoming one of the apostles of Sparta. Is, you know, because he's basically Sparta's grandson. Thank you, based Virgil. And it is in this tale of suffering of Nero and his journey that we come to understand that maybe Dante was the facilitator of Nero's faith in Sparta. Maybe Nero's faith in Sparta was what eventually made him surpass Sanctus as an individual. Maybe it was his faith in Sparta, not just his love for Kyrie, that made him a believer. Maybe everything that he's been through made him surpass Sanctus as a true apostle of Sparta. And it is in this level of dichotomy between states of Nero from beginning and end that Nero came to the speech he would eventually make as he ends Sparta.
and it only is further intensified when the remnants of that power manifest into the Savior and he uses his own demon arm reaches out and crushes the head of the Savior thus in my opinion transforming Nero from a heretic to a true believer and it is in this transformation and growth that I believe is the true reason why Dante decided to leave your motto within Nero. Sure, he definitely could tell that he was the son of you know, the son of Nero. And was probably also a partial motive. But I think it was because he saw the kind of person Nero was that he said, keep him. And in that aspect of keeping him, of saying keep him, when Nero says, but this means a lot to you, doesn't it? And Dante says, it's the kind of gift worth giving. And I think it is because he evaluated and respected Nero that he came to that conclusion. It is one of those feel-good endings that we all come together. And in the end, if you boil it down to its most basic elements, the reason why Dante's actions resonated more in the teachings of Sparta resonated within Nero and not the words of Sanctus is that overall words mean far less than action. And it is in the more Sparta-esque Christ-like actions that he was truly more that Dante is truly a more devout believer and it makes more it makes plenty of sense he is his father's son it is what you we would all call the butterfly effect it started off with Virgil and Lady having passion in their love and family a la DMC3 and would eventually start to grow and grow and grow as the series progressed albeit out of order and it is in that mindset ladies and gentlemen that i believe that nero went from faithless heretic to the greatest of believers a true apostle thank you all for watching this devil may cry for special edition theory video Thank you all for watching. I am David of Office Pretentious Brick. And with that, have a nice day. And have a nice night.